What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is of course part of a series where I focus on a specific director and rank that director's work from worst to best. I've done such directors in the past such as Spike Lee, Christopher Nolan, David Lynch, Wes Anderson. The list goes on. You guys can check that out on my playlist down below. But guys, you clicked on this video so you know that this time around I'm focusing on Baz Luhrmann's films and ranking them from worst to best. Now Baz Luhrmann, as of the filming of this video, which is September of 2021, he's made five films. So I'll be ranking those films from five being his worst to one being his best and of course my opinion. Now, keep in mind this will not be including any music videos, no short films, no TV shows, none of that. Just specifically those five feature length films that he's directed as of the filming of this video. So, guys, enough exposition. Let's get started. Kicking things off with number five, we have Romeo and Juliet. Which, truth be told, Romeo and Juliet had quite a strong start. I think it was like the first 20 or 30 minutes where I was definitely vibing with this movie and I was definitely in tune with the editing style, the frenetic nature of everything, and the color palette, the costume design, but I can't lie, as the movie progressed, I just, after a while, felt like it just got very monotonous. I just, I, I, I really didn't care as the movie progressed. And it's a shame because, again, it's such a strong start, and it does have a good cast, and I do think that the people that are involved definitely are doing a good job, but I definitely think that the editing got a little bit too much in terms of, like, the style, and I get it. Lerman's style is over-editing, for sure, but I just felt like it got to some points where it just was kind of like, Okay, it just kind of felt a little bit unnecessary, if that makes sense. And then I didn't really care about the characters or the story. Um, I definitely think that it's interesting and unique that Lerman decided to obviously have it be taking place in modern times, but obviously with the old-fashioned dialogue lifted right from Shakespeare's play. I respect that, but again, I just found myself to be quite disappointed by this movie. That's why it's personally number five. Next up, number four is Australia. Now, Australia is... Kind of the opposite, honestly, Romeo and Juliet. Like, it's definitely still a romance for sure, but the pacing isn't as frantic as Romeo and Juliet. It takes its time more so, but in my eyes, it took its time a little bit too much because this movie is nearly three hours, and I think, honestly, it could have easily been two hours. There's just a lot of stuff that just kind of meanders, and at the same time, like, I definitely appreciated the fact that it was definitely a more slower paced Lerman film, but I just felt like because the characters weren't that interesting, I found myself wandering more towards the technical aspects. And the technical aspects were good, but I just found myself to be quite disappointed by, again, because of the characters, because of the pacing, and just the overall overlong length. I just found myself feeling like, eh, and that's why it's number four for me. But again, if people like it, I can definitely understand why. But for me, eh, so that's my number four. Next up, number three is Strictly Ballroom. Now, this movie I actually had quite a difficult time to track down, but as of the filming of this video, it's on Amazon Prime, which is where I watched it. And Strictly Ballroom, it's interesting watching this movie um, after watching Romeo and Juliet because Strictly Ballroom was Lerman's first film. It was his debut film, and I'm not going to lie, it felt like a modern-day take on Romeo and Juliet, which is so ironic given that Strictly Ballroom came out, and then I think it was like three, four years later, he would make Romeo and Juliet. So I just, I, I just think it's very ironic. Like, he clearly is obsessed with tragedy. And it goes without saying, all five of these movies have tragedy. So I just think it's fascinating that right from the beginning, you can literally see his directing style. Now, Strictly Ballroom, though, I do think that it does have all the lavishes that you would expect of a Lerman film. It's got great costume design, great production design, um, fine performances, but I just thought that the themes and messages were just too simplistic for myself. And at the same time, again, similar to these other movies, I just didn't really care about the characters or the story. Um, I felt like the story, I will be honest, I thought the story early on was interesting, but as it progressed and got in more into the romance, I just, I just couldn't really care. Um, I just thought that it was kind of underdeveloped, honestly. But I definitely understand why some people would like this movie. And honestly, I do respect it to some extent because, again, it does set the stage for what Lerman would later on do in terms of having, you know, movies that focus on tragedies and everything. And I'll get more to it at the end of this video. But, again, it's still fascinating even if I do feel mixed about this movie. And that's, that's why it's number three. Next up, my number two is The Great Gatsby. So The Great Gatsby I saw eight years ago. And truth be told, I wasn't going to rewatch this movie. But... I said to myself, you know what, I think I owe it to this movie to at least give it a second chance. And when I first saw it eight years ago in theaters, I actually wanted to walk out 10 minutes in. But I was on a class field trip, so kind of had to. And I watched the whole thing. And 
I did find myself to be more interested in the movie as it progressed, but I just found that all the anachronisms just really didn't work for myself. And honestly, I gave like a two and a half and a five star rating, which for that time period of my life, that is actually very low. Funny thing is, now I give that movie the same rating, but I don't have those same issues. My issues now are more along the lines of, I feel mixed about it because it just, it feels so slow. It just feels very disjointed with how it goes about. It's a stop, start kind of motion with the way it's paced. And on top of that, similar to some of these other movies, the romance just isn't that interesting. It doesn't really engage you. I think the soundtrack also sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. The acting's strong though, the production design is on point, the costume design is amazing, godly honestly, it's it's incredible, it's, it's really good stuff. But again, I just feel mixed about this movie, but I do like it more than these other movies, and I definitely think that of all these other movies I could see myself coming back to, um, at least, well, I shouldn't say coming back to, I should say I came back to it specifically because I was like, well, it's just such an interesting movie to look at, but unfortunately it just doesn't it doesn't have that emotional, you know, core to it. And that's that's why it's number two and not, you know, higher. My number one, though, my number one is my favorite Baz Luhrmann movie. My number one is Moulin Rouge. Now, Moulin Rouge, I think, gets everything right where all these other movies falter. And I honestly think that this movie, it's not perfect, but I do think that it is his best movie. And I do think that it is, honestly, his magnum opus. Because... Where all these other movies I talk about the editing and, you know, the pacing and the characters, I actually cared about the characters in Moulin Rouge. Not only did I care about the characters, but I cared about the romance. I thought the pacing was really well done. I liked the editing. I think that the over-editing style in this movie works because it it's split in half. You have the first half where it's very over-edited and then the second half where it's not. It takes its time. Shots actually last longer than two seconds. And it makes sense given the given in the state of the, the movie. You know, because you think about it, the tone matches that. I just I think that this is a movie that's really well done. And I think that Lerman did a great job at directing this. And again, I just I find myself constantly thinking about this. Like I saw this movie six years ago and I've never really had this movie leave my mind to be honest. Like it's always been a movie I've been meaning to rewatch. And so I finally decided to rewatch this and I'm not gonna lie, I, I wanna pick this up on Blu-ray. It, it, it's a really good looking movie. And not only that, I do think that it's a great musical in terms of like these elements. I think Nicole Kim and Ewan McGregor have fantastic chemistry together. They're really good. It's a rock solid movie. Does it have its issues? For sure it does, for sure. Um, the themes and messages you might argue are a bit problematic to some regards and even a bit shallow. I get that, but I do think that overall it is a technical feast for your eyes. And at the same time, it does have those emotional moments where you do care for the characters and you do care about the story, even if the story does feel a bit predictable in some regards. But that ending, I do also think is good. But overall, yeah, this is why Moulin Rouge is my number one. So... That's my ranking, guys. Now, I like to talk about the director a little bit after doing a video like this. So I'll, I'll talk about Lerman now. Lerman is a director that I do find to be fascinating. I feel like most of his movies don't really fully work for me, but I feel like that mixed nature of him is what kind of makes him interesting, is that he always brings something fresh and invigorating to the table. Now, he obviously loves tragedy. He obviously loves over-edited sequences. He obviously loves, loves cotton candy-esque looks to films, and I respect that. Um, I just think that a lot of times the characters and the story and the pacing sometimes kind of leaves me feeling cold. But overall, he is a director that he is doing the Elvis movie, I believe it is, coming out in 2022. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious to see what he's going to bring to the table. And um, yeah, I respect Lerman for sure. But yeah, guys, that's my list for Baz Lerman's films ranked worst to best. Let me know your thoughts on his films down below and your ranking. And as always, guys, again, thank you very much for watching with the subscription. Notification bell and unlock. Catch you guys later.